distinguishing of the species. So each animal, let me rephrase it, you take your dog to the pasture and let it out the vehicle, and you've walked off to go look at some cows. How does the dog find you? Puts his nose to the ground. Each one of us pull a duvet, quilt, I don't know which part of America I'm in at the moment. I don't know what you guys call it. Blanket? Whatever. That is the amount of scent. Three times your width is the amount of scent you're dragging behind you. So if you've left animals in a paddock for a month, you must know how little grass is left that doesn't smell of an animal. No wonder they've got to eat sweets and take more supplements. And you've already told me they do. You've all experienced it. And that's exactly what happens, because to eat the stuff, they've got to have something else to disguise the taste. And you take the value of that every year, it's addictive, you do it every year, you buy yourself a new ranch every year, maybe every second year. Price of housing is taking up the price. Of it. So, you know, why are you doing it? Lovely breeze. Okay, so now. So we will go back to that original ranch there with the nice crooked fences. Doesn't matter how they go. Okay, so we got panic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's make it a round figure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we're going to go through, we're going to start in paddock number one, and we're putting all our cattle together, and we're going to start grazing paddock number one. So the place to start is at the beginning of your growing period, when the grass starts growing. You're allowed to grow to a height where it is grazable for your area. So let's say the grass is that height, and you let the cattle out and they graze. Right, so we've got 10 paddocks, so that's one, two, each one of those is a paddock. So now we've taken it through those paddocks, but we have learned, because we came along to Brookview, that you only eat the top third of the plot. Okay. And we decided that we were going to have a 30-day recovery period. So we got 10 paddocks, so in effect, roughly, they're staying three days in a paddock. So we've taken off the top, and remember that grass plant. top has the hydrogen and the rest has got the protein. We've increased the stock density because we're putting them all there. So a lot of this is knocked down and trodden and messed around. But we're grazing that, so we now come back to paddock number one after 30 days. But in 30 days, this grass, because you left so much behind, has grown very, very quickly. And it is looking great. Okay, it's looking like that, and again, we're doing, just taking the top third, okay? But now you know what happens when you clip a bush, you clip a peach tree, you clip grass, you clip a rose bush, it gets thicker. Am I right, or am I wrong? So this now is not the equivalent to that, you've all of a sudden grown a bunch more grass. Look how much thicker that is. Huh? Fantastic. What are you doing? You are growing your haystack for the winter. And it's not costing you anything. You take the top third, you go into your winter, 
but your third grazing is even taller. But you've cut it back twice. How many times thicker do you think it's going to be? I can't even draw it thick enough. So you're still paying your grazing going into the non-grain season, the slowing down for autumn, your grain season, you take the top third. What have you just created on the ground here? A bale. Your haystack. You open that and the frost will only be on the top. Because it is so dense inside, the frost can't get to it. But not only that, what have you done further down? That's the soil. But you've been treading grass down every time you graze, and you have a mattress of carbon in here. What's that going to do to your bale? Going to stop it freezing. Why do you want to track that? But better still, what's it done to your roots? Deeper and deeper and deeper. You think you're going to have a dry spell? No. Because you kept all the water on your property. Do you think you need moisture in the spring? No, because you've stored it from the water. Droughts and floods are man-made. We created them because of the way we managed. So don't blame anybody and don't go to the government for help because they shouldn't give you any. Because you created it. The trouble is, we are listening to their laws, so in actual fact they created it. So the quicker they take the laws away, the better we're all going to do. Makes sense. How far do you graze your bale down in the winter? We're getting there. No. <laughs> <laughs> much broader than here. Uh, we're getting there. Any questions? Yes, sir. Sorry, you did. Oh, you did put your hand up. Yeah, no question. You may answer it. <coughs> just what's the difference in nutritional value between leaving it, on, stocking it on the ground or baling it? Okay. <coughs> okay, you've tipped it. Yeah. You put a lot of carbon on the ground. Yeah. You fed the critters in the soil. The natural fertility has come back to the grass. The grass has got better protein and energy as you go through. And so this is better than any bale. Is there, a, is there a time associated with quality though? By will it deteriorate over the colder months? Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. So what do you do? You're coming to the non-grain season. Yeah, you guys are pushing me. Mm -hmm. You want to go out to the cattle quickly. So what do we do now? We come back and we graze our bale. We spent no fuel. We spent. We haven't bought a new tractor, we are unpopular with everybody because we don't buy anything. <laughs> so we actually bring the cattle through and we graze that. Now why do you just graze that and you don't leave the animals in to graze it to the bottom? Can anybody answer? Changes their rumen. Correct. Takes five days. So if you do what conventional farmers do and you put the animal in and you leave them there for until the paddock's finished, You've got good microbes and you've got bad microbes. And these are good. They're only good because they eat good food. These eat bad food. Alright? You then change them to a new paddock. And this is good food. But they never get there because it takes them at least five days to change. So where's the average? No wonder you've got to feed bad, because you can't take advantage of the good. But if you do this, and you graze it once, and you come back and you graze it twice, and you come back and you graze it a third time, and you've still got a drought reserve, <coughs> you are feeding microbes, so you're going in, and every day or so you're moving in, you're feeding good microbes, 
you're feeding in different microbes, and you're feeding bad microbes. Where do you think you're going to have to feed a supplement? With the bad microbes. It's all of a sudden saved you a bunch of money. But send it to me. I know what to do. Is your stockpiling at that point from August on to keep that? And then if you want to, you divide each one of these into five. Imagine what it's going to do to the amount of food you grow. Imagine what it's going to do to the amount of hydrogen you capture. Because all the plants that you've lost because of the way you've managed have now germinated and they are the best plants for your area, are grown and they're capturing the most energy. That's why they disappear. Because the animals kept selecting them until they disappeared. <coughs> Good. All understood. So now you come back the next season yeah, you've got a drought reserve left, right? So you go and maybe for the fourth glazing during your winter and you go and, yeah, and you eat the drought reserve and what's the drains? Or well, the snow melts or whatever that happens in this part of the world. You just carry on as if nothing happened because what is happening? This is now old grass, so let's depict it like this in black. Remember it has been trodden on and messed up and messed around so that the light can get in there. It is quite possible the light is getting in. But your green stuff, even though the frost hasn't stopped, is now growing underneath here because it is protected by the old grass. And everybody says, oh, but I moved my cattle onto a pasture. And they're all squitting and they're terrible and they've got pink eye. They've got pink eye because you've got no roughage. But you have left the roughage for your cattle. You haven't bailed it. It hasn't added extra money. And there it is. So you've got the green. And they're eating the green with the brown. And what do people do on rich pastures? They put out bales of hay to stop it squitting. You don't need to because your bale of hay is there. Saves you another bunch of money. But not only that, they'll eat bales. If you've got green grass, they'll eat bales, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because they like they don't like to squit, they like to bind with it. <laughs> and all it is is oxygen, hydrogen, and protein. All grasses have oxygen, hydrogen, and protein. They need oxygen. 40.5% of their diet, and it's not the oxygen you breed, it's the other than another oxygen. They need 40.5% of their diet to be oxygen. Hydrogen will vary from 15 to 19%, and protein will vary from 8 to 22% protein. What is this? It's an engine. It needs oxygen. You put a cloth into the oxygen air intake. What happens to the fuel? It blows smoke and it doesn't burn properly. You need more oxygen. You balance the hydrogen and the protein, the oil and the fuel, and it'll burn clean and it'll be efficient. So you can say, okay, these cattle I'm wanting to gain a pound a day. And I've got a program, you can work it out. On the day. What do you think happens on people who graze wheat in the United States? <coughs> they put their cattle or the stockers on the wheat and they gain six pounds a day. <coughs> right? But the average for the United States is two and a half pounds. So what happens? Everybody keeps their cattle for a hundred days. Why? I don't know. On pasture. At 50 days, they're getting six pounds a day. And 
to average here, they're going to lose maybe four pounds a day. <coughs> What's happened? The organs have clogged up with protein, the livers have packed up, the animals have closed up. So why not sell them there and buy a new gut? Or increase the hydrogen to equate to the protein and sell them at 100 days with a balanced diet. You see how important the pH is. I do guess. We like our money to go to town. And we like people in town to be happy. As long as we're battling, it's all fine. And we're getting the animal impact at the same time, and we're feeding the soil, and we're giving the animals selection. So you keep the stocking right the same for a year, but you increase the stock density and you move faster. You're keeping the stocking rate the same, you're giving them more selection, the cattle will do more, higher conception rate, more calves, better cattle, and so goes. And we go into it at the end so you can remember. If I say it now, by the time we finish, you're working. Right. I'm trying to break a few paradigms. I'm not telling you to get elephant. We have, are fortunate that we've got people in our country who can train African elephants to do what we want them to do, and they use them for tourism. And now you've got African elephant herding cattle. <laughs> so herding is the best way you can move animals. And we've seen it there when I told you, if you could keep your animals moving all the time, they're going to do better. But we have other ways of doing it. So we can herd them with elephant. We can herd them with labor. That's Zimbabwe. People, those cattle are fat. There's not a single fence on that property. They've got elephant, lion, cheetah, name it, they've got it. They cannot work with fences because the elephant break them. So they use people. And every night the cattle go into an enclosure, a corral, and we put the people on the outside so the lion can eat the people first. <laughs> Fencing? Look at that. Doesn't matter if it's conventional fencing, the two and a half thousand head of cattle in that herd. Animal performance, I've shown you and I've told you what to look for. Left hand side, pH, body language of the animal. Make sure the animal is happy. But then you've got electricity, which has been a tremendous invention. And of course here in the United States, you are spoiled for what you've got. In this particular company, I can't believe how good their product is. It is waste plastic, timeless fencing, and they are super, absolutely super. And reasonable, amazing. I prefer to use tape instead of poly wire because tape is visible at night. And it does get dark and when there are no moon. But yes, there are other ways that you do it and it doesn't work. Well, now look at those animals. Look at the left-hand side. They are hungry. But the people who own those cattle are too intent on planting their corn. And those cattle won't go out until 10, 12 o'clock in the morning. And they'll be back by 2, 3 o'clock. And they starve to death. But that is their wealth. That's a number there. Mm. Well, that. Look at the difference in the animals. Left hand side, Ooh. looks as though they bloated every day. <laughs> so how do my cattle at the end of winter? I'm happy with the condition, it's reasonable condition, big herds. It's a fallacy that cattle can't be in good condition in big herds. You can mix cattle, you can mix goats, <coughs> excuse me, you can have sheep, 
These particular cattle have got chickens outside the crawl to keep the ticks off. They eat the ticks and the eggs are delicious. <laughs> but these chickens go take a lift from the cattle or the goats and they jump on the back. Because to go to the grazing area, a chicken can't walk there. <laughs> so they catch a lift to the cattle and the goats and they get to the grazing area and then they sit down and eat the grasshoppers that jump up in front of the cattle. Again, I'm not telling you to get giraffe, giraffe as we call them in Africa, because they're harvesting a different level of energy. All I'm trying to get into your minds that there are a whole bunch of trophic levels of energy that you need to harvest, turn into some form of saleable product, whether it's athletics, in other words, cameras and tourism, or meat, etc. But turn it into something that is sustainable and you can harvest it. Livingston's Elam. They weigh heavier than any beef animal. And the stuff they eat is incidental. I mean, it doesn't even compete with a beef animal. So we're lucky in Africa. Missouri. Some stockers. But look, they're about to move. And look, that grass is trodden down, mixed up, and they're about to move. That's what it looks like after they've moved. Remember I said to you, you've got to feed the critters in and on the soil as well as the cattle. So the critters in and on the soil need green fodder as well as brown fodder. You don't want just brown litter. You feed the soil, the life in the soil, fungal and microbial bacteria, and get energy through the soil surface, which I've explained to you already. So that's what mob grazing does. <coughs> And at the bottom there, Greg has got four inches of what he calls earthworm cheese, where the litter from last year has gone into a cheese with a number of earthworms in it. And it is quite phenomenal, people. So we need to feed the whole, the animal, the soil, the grass, the life from the earthworms and the microbes. And in one cow bat, Greg had 463 earthworms in one cow pack. Now people, that is a factory on its own. Everybody says to Greg, what, have you, what fertilizer have you put on your fescue to get it like that? Greg hasn't used fertilizer now for six years. Because every time you put fertilizer, you're killing the critters that you want. But that's your problem. 463 earthworms in that one carpet. Quite exciting. That's what these pastures looked like before the cattle went through. Now there's a problem because he's left it too long. Well. Okay. So it's that slippery slope that you're managing for the year, making sure your grasses, your clovers are in a vegetative state, etc. So his cattle look like having just gone into that pasture. As high as the cattle. Back to Africa. Look at the look at the body language there, people. They contented. We were in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And we were watching a dairy farmer's cattle come out of the dairy. On the first day, they were all hunched up, crooked backs, walking gingerly, and they happened to be going across the damn wall. We managed to change his way of grazing. Three days later, you couldn't believe they were the same cattle. Straight backs, no tender feet, heads in the air. In fact, a lot of them, the tails were up and they were running to the pasture to get the energy. You can do it. Texas, three and a half thousand head of cattle in one herd. Stockers. That's the density that they were grazing at. And the only comment I can say to this guy is he took too much off. He wasn't investing enough, and I think the farm might start to tell him that he can't have as many cattle as he thought he would like to have because he's leading nothing for the soil. Back in Africa, I heard of my heifers. 
that was the stock density that I was using and moving five times a day. I'm not saying to you that every plant must be eaten. In fact, it mustn't. Every plant mustn't be eaten. Because these plants that are left behind that haven't been grazed yet, this plant is a very, very unpalatable plant. And we have burnt it sour and I'm now trying to graze it sweet. Because by burning it, I was keeping that plant in a situation where it could keep growing and keep reseeding. Okay, because of the tool of fire. Now that I've got cattle and I'm managing them such that that is not grazed, over three years it's shaded out underneath and it dies. It creates a whole bunch of carbon. And what do you think grows in the middle of that carbon? A plant that I've never seen before, but the seeds are still there. So over time, you're not only changing the condition of your soil and your grass, but you start changing the species in your grass. And again, that is that herd that was moving five times a day. Over time, you find the plant, then even if it is that high, the animal will graze it. Remember I told you about that walkway that was annihilated? They will graze it from that height to the ground if you let them. Because it is all palatable. So when you look at this plant, this slide, they've eaten everything that's palatable and left the unpalatable. If you start pressuring them to eat the unpalatable, you lose animal performance and you are encouraging the unpalatable plants to remain in situ. Okay. Any questions? What did I say earlier? You don't have to produce any more seed. There's enough seed in the world for no more seed to be to produced in 100 years. Right. So the only way I can stop the plant from doing that is... That plant seed will only germinate if I put fire there. Because it does not want to germinate. Nature has put it there because I've destroyed the soil surface to such an extent that all the grasses I want won't germinate because it's dry and it's cold and it's everything is hot and that seedling can't germinate and can't sustain itself. So I'm allowing that grass to carry on producing seed because it doesn't matter about the seed. There's more than enough seed. People who go out chopping scotch thistle are only wasting their, their time. They do better to go and sit under the tree and drink a beer. <laughs> because over time if they manage properly and they think while they're drinking that beer, how are they going to change the management to get rid of the scotch thistle, which will disappear. Anything you don't want will disappear. So you plan for what you want, you manage with what you have, and over time, everything you don't want will disappear. Believe it or not. Any question? No? Sorry? You said something about the vegetative state that you had in here. Yeah, the vegetative, that's why I leased out property right. because I could never come back in time. I have too big an area. Right. So only when I leased out two thirds of my property did we have enough cattle then to manage what we had. But then once we managed what we had, I still had too few cattle. Monitor and watch. Watch the cattle. You see what they told me there? Now, had I spent the day with those cattle, it would have been fascinating. Because you know immediately all the 